everybody. It's Allie and welcome to our Y&R chat for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. Every year when the time for March Madness rolls around, I never remember. <laughs> I am always caught off guard thinking I'm about to settle in to my episode of Y&R only to find out that I'm seeing a basketball court instead of my soapy scandals <laughs> and I'm mad <laughs> I'm mad I think to myself why don't they put sports on the sports channel <laughs> and leave my Y&R time alone? Every year, March Madness makes me mad. <laughs> except, except for last year, because at this time last year, COVID had just hit and we were facing an uncertain future for our soap and even March Madness had been canceled. So last year, for the first time ever, I had so much empathy for basketball fans. For the first time ever, I had the realization that, oh, basketball is their thing in the same way that Y&R is my thing and they're not getting this this year. They're not getting their thing this year. And my little kitten heart just went out to basketball fans everywhere. <laughs> so this year, when March Madness rolls around, just like every year, I didn't realize and I didn't remember. So it's 11 o'clock on Friday, the TV is on, and I start to hear sounds coming from my living room that don't sound like the tones of a soap opera. I don't hear the faint dialogue. I don't hear the music swelling. Instead, I hear screeching <laughs> and loud clanging. So I walked into my living room. I saw the basketball marching madly across my Y&R hour. And for the first time in my life, I swear to you, I stood in front of my TV, not having my Y&R for the day, and I said, oh, good for them. <laughs> good for them. <laughs> they got their basketball back. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, I can't promise that this feeling of goodwill will be extended into next year. But for this year, I extend my olive branch to basketball lovers worldwide. I, I wish you the best. Congratulations on getting your March Madness back. May you swish your hoops forever. But please also consider moving to ESPN, won't you? What I was really hoping to see on Friday, and what I guess I won't be seeing on Monday either, was Chelsea getting busted. Oh, she has fooled her nurse, she has fooled her doctor, and she has fooled Adam, but not for too much longer, 
So it seems. So it seems. From the previews anyway, because in the previews for next week, Adam is coming home and he's peeping through the front door at Chelsea as she's doing stretches in the chair. Ah! Oh. Oh, is this it? Is this where Chelsea gets busted? I don't know, because I'm also half expecting her to just pop up out of the chair and say, Oh, wow! Adam! It's a miracle! I can move! I can walk! I can talk! I can't believe you weren't here when I first realized it! <laughs> that Chelsea is a crafty one. She seems to have it all figured out. This week, Chelsea was sending some text messages from Adam's tablet to Sharon's phone, trying to fake some messages as if they were coming from Adam to Sharon. And the messages were saying that he wants to be free. He wants them to both be free. Please respond. Please don't ignore me. Well, okay, the text messages would have been a really great plan, I guess, except what was she thinking that Adam would do or think when Sharon ultimately did respond to those text messages? Chelsea had to know that Sharon would respond. Chelsea wanted Sharon to respond. Did she not plan for the fact that Adam would then know that someone was setting him up? I mean, he saw these messages, these return responses coming from Sharon to his phone. Did Chelsea think he wouldn't think that was strange? I don't know. Maybe Chelsea is counting on the fact that Adam will think that Chloe is the one who's doing it, that Chloe is the one who's setting him up. Maybe Chelsea used Chloe to have Ray poisoned and to frame Adam for the crime. And so what if Adam thinks Chloe is the one who did it? Ray wakes up in cold sweats after passing out on last week's shows, and instead of calling 911, Sharon just waits around for him to wake up, and then when he does wake off, she lets him send her off to get some of Lola's chicken soup as a cure-all. Oh! You passed out on the floor? Sure, I'll go get you some chicken soup. That should take care of it. <laughs> that makes total sense. <laughs> I was dying when Sharon went to Lola for the soup. How can Lola be so kind toward Sharon? I would think that Lola might want to use some of her new Supergirl moves to, like, fly Sharon off to another planet. Sharon was kissing another man in her restaurant while being married to her brother. No way. No way. Lola's reaction should have been more. It should have been bigger, but Lola's just there to provide some conversation to the other characters who have got some stuff going on right now, because Lola was also present to give some shocked faces at uh, Elena's impulsiveness at sleeping with uh, Devon uh, twice, accidentally. <laughs> accidentally, though, it was an accident twice. <laughs> I don't know, does Lola have some kind of homey Cuban cuisine that will help Elena stop doing that? I doubt it. <laughs> oh, well. Lola's chicken soup was no cure-all for what's ailing Ray. Because after Ray told Sharon it's not just the cold sweats. He's actually now feeling like his feet are on fire. That, that, 
that was the straw that made Sharon call, oh, not 911. No, 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 not immediate help. She called Nate. She called Nate when she should have called 911, but she calls Nate over to the house. And Nate drew some of Ray's blood and to send it away for an analysis. I can't believe that Nate wouldn't have suggested getting this man to the emergency room. But no, no, no. We just need to draw some blood and have it analyzed. No doubt about it. I think the poisoning theory is correct. I think Ray's results are going to come back with some kind of cyanide or something in his system that shouldn't be there. And then I think Sharon is going to look at her phone, see all of these desperate text messages from Adam begging to be free. And she's going to put that together with all of the missing Adam tchotchkes from her house. And I think even Sharon is going to think that Adam is behind it all. Oh, I wish I would have formally predicted last week who would win the Syaxeries business because by Monday it was starting to dawn on me that oh yeah it's gotta be Victor and Adam because Billy and Lily already have a business. Victoria has a business. Adam needs a business. He needs a reason to stick around. And now that Team Victor and Adam have won the Syaxeries bid, Victor and Adam can just run it together to their heart's content, giving Billy a taste of his own medicine and continuing to uh, further the, the, the Newman sibling rivalry that Adam and Victoria have going on. It's a contest. <laughs> it's always a contest. Which Newman child is most like Victor? And currently, Adam is the one who is on Victor's good side, and Victoria is the one on the outs. Victor and Adam are bonding all over the place. I'm telling you, I think Victor and Adam need matching leather jackets. I want to see them start dressing the same. And if it's not too much to ask, could we please also get a patch for the back of these leather jackets that maybe says, Team Newman? <laughs> Team Victor Newman <laughs> with Junior in parenthesis. Oh, this is great. I love how reassuring Victor is being toward Adam. Ah, oh, that father son relationship. That's the relationship to watch. Adam and Victor need to continue to get closer and closer so that it will hurt that much more when they're torn apart next time. Because, oh, today they are enjoying sitting around, complaining about Victoria, bonding with each other. Victor pretty much telling Adam that he's the new chosen one. But you just wait. You just wait until Adam does something that Victor doesn't like with this new company. Then there's going to be a problem between them. And I'm sure that Nikki will be right there, ready to tell Victor that she told him so. She told him not to get too close to Adam. He's too manipulative. He's too evil. And Nikki <laughs> wasn't real shy this week about telling Adam the same thing. She called a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Adam. That was fun. Just, she, just so she could tell him that she doesn't trust him. She has her eye on him when it comes to all of this father-son bondorama that's going on right now. And she suggests in no uncertain terms that maybe when Chelsea gets better, Adam should just stick to his his original plan and get out of town. Even though Victoria did not win the Syaxeries bid, I don't think that we overestimated her appeal to Mr. Ashland Locke. Apparently, he was not going to sell her the business, but I still think that he wants to give her the business.
<laughs> oh, and I'm for it, but Victoria is stuck. She is instead stuck. She is in love with her ex, but unable to have him. Or is she? Hmm. After Victoria's impromptu, accidental confession of love for Billy, Billy tells Lily about it, and Lily suggests that maybe Billy needs to take a step back and take some time to think about his feelings for Victoria because maybe it wasn't impromptu. Maybe it wasn't an accident that Victoria told him that she loves him. Maybe Victoria is bound and determined to be reunited with her true love, Billy, at any cost. And maybe this is just the beginning of their reunion. And Lily does not want to find herself on either the inside or the outside of another situation like she had with Kane. She doesn't want to be the rebound girl if Billy and Lil if Billy and Victoria are ultimately just going to be getting back together. I see where she's coming from, but it seems rash. It seems rash that she put this wedge between them now. Billy has done nothing to make her feel uh, insecure. Uh, Billy has done nothing but give her reasons to feel confident, I would think. He has shown absolutely no interest in Victoria that I've seen. Quite the opposite. Billy seems done, done, done with having a relationship with Victoria. He's done, done, done with the Newmans forever. And it's looking good on him. Billy seems to be loving his life. He's loving on Lily. Everything's going so well. I think maybe Lily needs to go back and have another conversation with Tracy. <laughs> I think Tracy needs to give her a pep talk and tell her to just keep moving forward with Billy. Never mind Victoria. I understand why Lily is hesitant. Of course. The relationship is still new and, and she's playing the long-term game here. I mean, what happens after the newness of their relationship wears off? Will Billy find himself drawn back into the family that he shares with Victoria? It's not just the love story that he shared with Victoria. It's the family that they continue to share together. See, that's the risk you got to take when you're falling in love, though. And especially when it's with someone who has an ex-wife and children. Billy has to consider and balance Victoria's uh, needs with the needs of his children. If he wasn't being considerate of Victoria and his children, he would be a jerk. He's doing what he should be doing. And I don't want to see Lily taking a step backwards out of fear. I don't want her to be doing what she's doing out of fear. Is Lily just going to be afraid of Victoria? Is she just going to cower to Victoria and ruin a good thing, a really, really good thing, just because someone else wants what she has? No way! Amanda must have stopped by Devon's penthouse right after Elena left because Devon hadn't even cleaned up the sex blankets. <laughs> I was just about to lose it. Watching Amanda folding up those blankets, trying to help Devon tidy up, asking what's been getting his creative juices flowing lately. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> but awesome. <laughs> but awful. <laughs> Ooh. And Devon. Oh, Devon was trying his very best to tap dance his way out of it like he was the Warner Brothers frog or something. Top hat and cane ready to scoot his way off stage before she could ask him any more questions about it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
But while Devon was off screen, Amanda noticed a little something sparkly in the threads of Devon's carpet. Oh, it's a bracelet. Did Devon forget to mention that Elena has been coming over lately? Because they've got some unresolved stuff to work out together in the carpet and on the couch and all over those blankets you were just touching. <laughs> oh, 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 Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Oh, so good, but broke my heart so bad because Amanda is the only innocent one in all of this. And I thought she handled it flawlessly. She asked the questions that she needed to ask without being accusatory, without being angry. But she saw those beads of sweat forming on Devon's brow. <laughs> and she was out of there. No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> Amanda, out. Ooh, but then she got to the coffee house. She ran into Nate, and it, Nate talked a little bit about his breakup with Elena, and all of a sudden, a couple things started coming to light. Oh, even though it wasn't as dramatic, I thought that Nate and Elena's breakup was pretty good, too, because it started out looking like we were just headed right back to the same triangle we've been in with Devon and Elena and Nate, and that uh, Elena got rejected by Devon, and she was going to go try to get back together with Nate now, but uh, I, it didn't turn out that way, so there was a little bit of a twist, because Elena was having this really beautifully lit dream. I don't know if you guys remember this or noticed it, but she was having a dream and the lighting was so soft and it was so warm and it just looked so gorgeous and she was just gorgeously laying in Devon's gorgeous arms in this dream. She was happy to be reunited with him at last, but then Amanda came in and she was furious with them both for cheating. For, for the fact that she was sleeping with Devon. And then in the dream, Nate came in too. And he was asking her to just forget about Devon. To just forget about the past. And move on with him. And there was this great, great frame. Uh, I had it put up at the website for, uh, I think, on Wednesday. Because it was just so beautiful. It had um, Elena in the center of the camera and Devon was in the fore, uh, the foreground with his head turned to the side. It was like a profile shot of, of Devon and then Nate was in the background and it, I thought it was just, it looked so gorgeous but also it perfectly highlighted Elena's choice. The choice that she's been trying to make for months now at this point. Her in the center, Devon in the foreground, Nate in the background. It was just so, so cool but I was thinking, oh, we're just headed back right to where we've been. No, no, no. Later in that same episode, Nate and Elena met at the coffee house, and Nate tells her to just forget about that choice. He's going to make it real easy on her. He's done now. No choice necessary. He's taken himself out of the running. Well, finally. Thanks for showing up, Nate. Thanks for finally getting a backbone. And Nate also gave Amanda just enough info that sent her back to Devon for answers. Black and white answers. No dancing, no tap dancing, no top hat and cane. She wanted answers from Devon. And Devon tells Amanda what he also told Elena just a little bit earlier, that he, yeah, he slept with Elena twice while he was with Amanda, but it really helped him realize that he doesn't want to go back to Elena. They have feelings for each other, but there's no fixing their relationship. So Devon tells Amanda he wants to just move forward with her. Gee, Devon, that's nice. You had to sleep with someone else twice to decide that you wanted to be with me? No. Sorry, 
No. Ugh. What a jerk. And might I say, it is absolutely fun to be mad at Devon right now. <laughs> Devon is usually so perfect. He's usually so cool and so together. And I am really enjoying my chance to get a little bit snippy with him and be mad at him. <laughs> I don't usually get to be this mad at Devon, but I am. I feel betrayed on Amanda's behalf. And I don't know if I want her to forgive him, even though I wanted them together. I feel like this is a question that I'm just going to have to throw out to the YNR chatters and you guys can let me know how I should feel about this reu potential reunion. Should Amanda forgive Devon and decide to move forward with their relationship or is the information that he brought to light the final straw for you? YRChat.com is the place where you can vote. Do you want to see Amanda forgive Devon? Give him the forgiveness that he's clearly asking for, the chance that he's asking for to just move on from here, or are you done? Was that enough? Ugh, I'm so torn because I have wanted Devon and Amanda to get together for so long at this point, and I don't want it to be over so quickly. We did a lot of building to get here. I don't want it to be done. But at the same time, I don't want to see her just accept what he did. I don't want her to forgive and forget all of that fuzzy blanket sex that she cleaned up from his living room. That is unacceptable. You know, I feel like there. I feel like I don't get a choice here, though, because I feel like Devon and Elena are just ultimately going to end up back together, and then we're going to be right back to square one with Amanda and Nate. Blah! I don't want Amanda and Nate because we've tried that twice already and it fizzled out each time. I don't want uh, Amanda and Nate to be together just be as a, as a backup plan. And that's what it felt like both times. They had two times to work it out. It didn't work out. And I... Uh, I feel like if... Devon and Elena must be together and are ultimately destined to be back together. All right, okay. But then what about pairing Nate with someone else, like Victoria? Why not Nate and Victoria? Or, I've said this in the past, this would be my favorite surprise coupling of the decade. What about Amanda and Adam? That, like, I've been saying that for a while because I think they could be really hot together. Amanda and Adam... I mean, shoot, if we must have Devana and Elena back together, then why not mix it, mix up the couples in different ways? Let's really, really mix it up. Not just feel like we got to go back to Nate and Amanda just because there's no one else for them. There's lots of people for them. Let's really shake it up here. Why not? Kyle and Summer happened upon Jack having drinks with Ashland Locke at Society. And it was so awkward and so obvious that something was going on between Kyle and Tara. <sighs> Ashland also later saw Tara and Kyle arguing in the hotel lobby right before they checked out. So I'm starting to think that Ashland already knows, possibly has known, that something has gone on between them. How could anyone miss Tara walking around with her cold, dead, bloodshot eyes looking like she's a hostage victim? <laughs> he has to know something's going on with his wife. And then he's seeing all these awkward interactions between her and Kyle. Maybe he's just now figuring it out, but maybe he's known all along. And maybe he made his decision to sell Cyaxeries to a Adam and Victor as a way to get back at the Abbots. I don't know. <sighs> Summer seems to be feeling pretty comfortable, though. She suggests to Kyle that maybe it's time they get re-engage. Let's re-engage the engagement that she de-engaged when she ran out on him right before they were supposed to be married. <laughs> She's ready now. There's going to be no running out on him and then sneaking around in a big floppy hat and sunglasses for a couple weeks. No. She's ready for the marriage, which, which basically means it's all doomed. <laughs> 
Summer and Kyle's engagement spells doom. <laughs> But it's fun to watch her feeling pretty confident this, these days. Uh, Summer cornered Tara at Society just to get in her two cents about how secure she is in her relationship with Kyle. And I really liked Tara telling Summer to manage her own business and not be so worried about what's going on with her because Sally Spectra is the one that Summer should be worried about. Tara knew that Sally was sniffing around for information the other day and she let Summer know that in no uncertain terms. Mind your business and deal with Sally and stop worrying about me while I'm minding mine. Ooh. Gee. Can't somebody find a way to drive this Sally Spectra out of town and just be done with her once and for all? Like, set up a, 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 a date for her? Set her up with a hot young guy who works at the Grand Phoenix Hotel? Can anyone do that? Set her up on a new date with a new guy and hope that they'll run away together and never come back? Oh, hey, Phyllis! <laughs> hey! I have to at least appreciate Phyllis's creative passive aggressiveness there. That was a whole new level. <laughs> trying to give Sally an all-expenses-paid date with anyone but Jack. <laughs> that was quite quite a little uh, uh, attempt there, but of course it wasn't going to work, and if that's not going to work, I guess Phyllis has no choice but to show Jack Sally's search history. I don't know why Phyllis waited so long to do that. It's been a couple weeks since she saw that search history. I, I kind of appreciate her keeping it under her hat, though. She's practicing what she's preaching, playing a slow game and only giving out information as she needs to. I mean, I guess she was just only planning to use that information as a last resort. Because I tell ya, I don't think that Jack is going to see that as an eye-opener that destroys his relationship with Sally. I think Jack is going to see that as an eye-opener that destroys his friendship with Phyllis. Oh, you can never have too many feathers if you want to fly. That was our quote from last week. I really liked that one. You can never have too many feathers if you want to fly. Victoria is the one who said it. She was talking to Nikki about acquiring another feather in the Newman cap with Cyaxeres. That didn't quite work out for her. I'm sure Victoria has plenty of other feathers that she has acquired, just not this one. But you can never have too many feathers if you want to fly. I love that. I think that's a fun quote. And... Henry, Jamie, Kamna, Cheryl, Sam, Victoria, Daisy, and Ambreen. You guys all got it right. Oh, I had two quotes that I was going back and forth with for this week, but I think this is the one that's going to win out. Are you ready? What's wrong with wanting nothing but the best? <laughs> I really like that as a life philosophy. What's wrong with wanting nothing but the best? Who said it? If you think you know, you can go to whyourchat.com to leave me your guess. And if you get it right, I will give you your shout out during next week's Why in Our Chat. Well, let's take a look at our poll results and comments on last week's poll. The question was, the Ashland Lock story. So far, you love it or do you want to leave it? 67% of you are loving the Ashland Lock story. But I have to say, again, 33% is a pretty strong uh, minority of people saying they're ready to leave it already. Um, well, Jamie voted that she loves it, saying that Ashland has the potential to become a GC keeper. I know, I see him as a keeper, too. Herman says, YNR finally hit the nail on the head with this story, this character, and this casting of Richard B. 
I hope that they do justice to the story, the character, and the actor. Maybe he'd be able to save the show! I saw Victoria show a side of herself that we needed to see more of. I hope they make Ashland complex and layered and not a mustache twirling villain. The weak spot in the story is Kyle, the wife, and the kid Harrison. Once those are outed and dealt with, I hope the character of Ashland is a keeper. Yes, I, you know, I think um, deciding to not make him the mustache twirling villain here, that's how, that's going to be the key, that's going to be the test. I think that soap opera fans expect a little more than the mustache twirling villain at this point, and I think that this actor in particular has plenty of capability of giving us the depth and nuance. If he's going to be a villain, I think we can really still get into him and his reasons why and his reasoning, and I think there's a lot of character development that could be done here. It's also just nice to have someone new. Something new and shiny. <laughs> someone new and shiny, full of potential, nothing but. Sharita says, I voted to love it. Richard has always played seemingly nice guys on the surface with ultimately some swar swarmy, sleazy agenda and personality underneath. I'm sure Ashland will be a bit like that, except apparently this time he doesn't have to hide his villainous side as much. He was a cad on Desperate Housewives and a serial killer on General Hospital. The other things I've seen him in, he was often a bad guy by nature pretending to be good. He's a good actor also and I want him to somehow end up with Victoria. It's interesting that so many people seem to have really picked up on that interaction between he and Victoria, and most people that I've seen have said, all right, you know, as long as he doesn't turn out to be like a, a, a super weird creep, we totally want something new, someone new for Victoria. But yes, um, I think this actor's very good. Diana had mentioned, too, that he was on Seinfeld. He played the, um, the doctor in the the Ugly Baby or episode. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and now I'm able to place him from Seinfeld, but a lot of people did also say that they remember him from Desperate Housewives, which I'm sure is a, a, a very good series to pick up. I think I watched the first season, maybe two, um, and, and haven't seen it in a while, but I bet that is a good one. And it stars a Y&R alum, um, I'm not thinking of her name though right now, Ava Longoria, Ava Longoria. Oh, uh, well, I mean, Zuperplex says Ashland cannot swoon Victoria fast enough. Please let us not go down this tunnel of doom with Billy once again. Yeah, I think, I, I feel like, again, a lot of people are saying that, too. Like, we don't really want the Billy and Victoria story anymore. We want something new. Uh, and Ashlyn Luck is such a great opportunity for that. But Zuperplex was straddling the fence on the poll question for the week, if, you, if, if the story was loved or ready to be left. Um, Zuperplex says... If Ashland sub uh, subject is subjected to abject humiliation, then I'm all for him. If he swoons Victoria, then I'm all for him. But if he is a Victor doppelganger throwing his weight around, then he can just see his way out the back door. And Marianne V says, I voted no to the story, but I understand the appeal of a power grab and a possible love interest for Victoria if she ever gets over Billy. But do we really need another victor? Although it might be nice to see a uh, knockdown drag out power play between them. Oh, okay. So, so people are kind of loving the idea of having Ashland in a love story, loving the idea of getting him in there and, and challenging, but not just looking for him to be another Victor Newman because we already have one of those. <laughs> and I'm quite fond of the one that we have already. Thank you. Moving on, Victoria says, Tracy's advice to Lily was spot on. Sometimes what is most obvious to others is a mystery to the one going through the dilemma. I'm glad Lily told Billy her concerns and asked him to dig deep into his feelings. Lily deserves Billy to commit to her and stop running over to see Victoria or indulge her visits to Chance Calm. Oh, this is a good point, Victoria, that Lily is maybe just doing this as a precautionary measure because she needs to know if there is any lingering anything there before she's able to commit herself to the relationship with him. But at the same time, I feel like, well, Billy really should 
be going over to see Victoria and his kids and still being engaged in the family that he has with her. But at the same time, you make a good point that he also is responsible for setting boundaries, and that includes her little bit visits to Chancecom, stopping by work to see him, which is obviously making Lily uncomfortable. So I think you're right that Victoria needs to do a better, or sorry, that Billy needs to do a better job of setting those boundaries. And um, I, I think he wants to be sensitive to Victoria. I think he doesn't want to hurt Victoria. He's hurt Victoria plenty. So I think he's probably trying to be a little extra easy on her and maybe it is more than he should be because we certainly wouldn't want to give Victoria any false hope if there's if there's none if there is none but if there is some hope then I, th I think you do make an excellent point that Billy owes it to both Lily and Victoria to explore that and figure it out. Ellen says it was such a relief to hear Lily being direct and honest like that. She is so right. She's been through a lot with Kane, Hillary and Devon, prison, Neil. She needs to jump off the Billy train if he has any interest in reuniting with Victoria. I do agree with that. It's just that I've seen no interest coming from Billy toward Victoria. I just see guy who's trying to be kind to his ex-wife, not hurt his ex-wife, but is still also trying to navigate the waters of raising a family with her. If he takes off Victoria, it's not going to be good for his kids. It's not going to be good for him, and therefore it's not going to be good for Lily. It's not going to be good for anybody. So Billy is in, he, he's on a bit of a tightrope here right now, and it's interesting to see him try to walk it. Leslie says, I felt such joy the second I saw Tracy popping in on Lily today in today's opening scene. Uh, so much so that it caught myself off guard. And I thought to myself, I hope she knows that she brings so much joy to her fans. So if you are reading this, Beth Maitland, thank you. <sighs> Having Beth Maitland and Tracy back on YNR is just one of the best things that has happened to us. There is just, it's an X factor. There is just something about her that sparkles and inspires. She seems to be a very special person, and I think that that is so noticeable in her portrayal of the character. Victoria says, Billy did a nice job of reassuring Victoria that she shouldn't be embarrassed for her feelings. It brought out the softer side of Victoria, which has been absent for quite a while. But oh my, wardrobe was a miss in dressing Billy that day. His jacket was way too loud and distracting. He looked a bit awkward in it. <laughs> Oh, well, first of all, yes, I do agree. It was nice to see the softer side of Victoria, but I don't, I, I don't want to see that coming from Billy because Billy is really happy now and really performing. His life is going great with Lily. I want to see the softer side of Victoria being brought out in a different way, uh, although I agree with you. It certainly was nice to see it. I also agree with you about the gray plaid jacket that Billy was wearing. It was very... Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> Billy needed a thick black pair of glasses uh, with, a, with a piece of tape holding them together in the middle. That would have really completed the look. <laughs> nerd chic. Or just nerd. Oh, well, how about this from Ellen who says... People think Victoria takes after her father, but she gets her ice queen side from Nikki. Nikki has always been blindingly jealous that Victor had a son with hope. That's all she sees when she looks at Adam. She encouraged Victor to abandon Adam as a child. She joined Nikki and Victoria in treating him like dirt when Victor brought him to Genoa City as an adult, and again when he returned from the dead. She conveniently forgets all the horrible things that Victor has done to Adam and, and that Nick has denied Adam any access to his son. Like everyone, Adam's good deeds are erased for her. Victor would be dead if not for Adam. 
Nikki the Ice Queen says, I'm putting you on notice, Adam. And she just looks silly. If Catherine said that to Adam, sitting in a wing chair, drinking tea from a bone china teacup, yep, that would be very believable. But Nikki, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I tell you, I love this point that Nikki has just always been jealous of Hope and that every time she looks at Adam, what she sees is the fact that Victor had a child with Hope. I think that is spot on and I do think that Nikki has always had a, a chipped china teacup on her shoulder when it comes to Adam, yes. Hey, let's talk about uh, Chelsea. Good girl Chelsea Lawson. She was bad girl turned good girl, now turned bad girl again. Astra says, I think Chelsea and Chloe are the red herrings when it comes to stealing Sharon's items and possibly poisoning Ray, if that's what's going on with him. I think it's Sharon. I think she's having bipolar episodes or a split personality and taking the items and poisoning Ray and just not remembering. I think she wants to be with Adam so bad that she's doing these things to sabotage her relationship with Ray. Wow, Astra, that's great. I, I, I think that's quite a red herring. You think that Sharon is behind it all, including poisoning Ray, if that's what's going on with him. That's great. Ellen says the delay is going to make Sharon look guilty of poisoning Ray, especially after the fake text Chelsea is sending, making it look like she's having an affair with Adam. I'm assuming Ray's blood work is going to show something toxic, somehow planted by Chelsea. She's evil. <laughs> Just get up out of your wheelchair and get a divorce like a normal person. Of course, anyone who forgives Chloe would, and wants her bestie as a bestie has a screw loose. Yeah, it's, it's, see, that's the thing. Is Last week I thought, oh, Chelsea's trying to set up Sharon to make it look like Sharon's doing it. As the week evolved on, I started thinking it kind of more looked like she was trying to make it look like Adam was doing it. But I think it's very well both. It, it's very well both. I think Chelsea just wants her revenge when she could just get a divorce. Diana says, Chelsea told Chloe that her plan to get revenge on Adam was nothing drastic. I don't remember the exact wording, but if Chelsea's poisoning Ray, I'd say that's pretty drastic. Also, breaking into Sharon's home on the ranch is serious as well. I wonder if Chelsea lied so that Chloe would go along with her plan, or did Chelsea change her mind? I can't believe that Chelsea would go as far as to poison an innocent good man like Ray just to get back at Sharon and Adam. If that's true, she's way worse than Adam ever was. Sharon better watch her back as Chelsea has already smashed Sharon over the head once before with a lamp. Sharon needs to sleep with one eye open. <laughs> you know, that's true. Okay, first of all, yes, poisoning Ray. If that's what's going on, poisoning Ray to get revenge on Sharon and Adam is, it's way off mark. She could have just poisoned Sharon. <laughs> just got directly to the course. But if she really is poisoning Ray and is behind that, then it is, that's pretty darn callous. But again, as we said before, Chelsea was bad girl, good girl, bad girl, good girl, bad girl. I mean, she really swings back and forth far more than Sharon and Adam do. Uh, but also I like um, your point here that um, why did she downplay it to Chloe? Why did she tell Chloe that she wasn't doing anything drastic, she just needs her help? That makes me wonder if Chelsea is knowingly setting Chloe up to take the fall if any of this goes sideways. Like, she's doing what she needs to do. She's using Chloe to enact all of this stuff. And in the end, if Chloe's the one that takes the fall, so what? Nobody's going to suspect her. I mean, that's a pretty new level of cold, too. Sandra says, do you guys think Melissa Claire Egan, Chelsea, is leaving YNR? Sometimes the writers pen themselves into a hole with no way out but for a character to leave. How could Chelsea remain on her screens after the truth of her recovery in the role uh, and the role in the text and poisoning comes out? 
She said herself that she wants to run away and start all over with Connor far away from Genoa City. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I can't really see why they are getting rid of Chelsea. They seem to love Chelsea, uh, so I'd be surprised if they got rid of her. Um, uh, but it's, anything's possible that you're certainly right that they're writing her into a corner. Hey, side note, I was just watching Chelsea in the chair this week, and she was talking to Chloe about how hard it is for her to stay stiff as a board, and I thought to myself, well, I bet that's exactly what Melissa Claire Egan feels in this role right now. I mean, to be on set and filming all these scenes and to have to remain stiff and motionless and also to not even blink too much, that would be really challenging for an actor. I bet she's really tired. I bet she's really sore. I bet it's uncomfortable doing the role this way. And I kind of think YNR, it better have a really good payoff. The payoff here better be excellent because otherwise it's dragging on too long. It, it feels a little bit like we've had what, weeks and weeks, I mean, months at this point after Chelsea had her stroke. I mean, it's, it's been a month, right, since Chelsea had her stroke, and we're just now getting to the point where we are seeing the payoff, where she's going to get caught, where we're seeing her progress and, and seeing her stand up. I feel like maybe they could have they could have made this a little more succinct. Well, how about this theory from Daisy, who says, I know that Chelsea is texting Sharon as Adam, but I don't think she's taking the tchotchkes or poisoning Ray. Even though Sharon mentioned Faith being bipolar, it could be some type of split personality brought on by her extreme stress. Faith really has been through a lot. Her mother's cancer, changing schools, drinking under pressure, being bullied, Adam in her space, Sharon explaining what Adam did away. Also, even though Faith messed up a little, she was not believed for quite some time. So her stress has built up inside and now it and now it's coming out in some type of personality split. In this altered state, Faith may be sending herself messages. If she is having an episode, she could be unaware that she's the one typing and sending herself a message. In her mind, she could believe that it's from someone that she perceives as a kindred spirit who sees what she's been through and fully and completely. And she's the one taking the items that Adam gave to her mother, maybe to destroy them. She's also been poisoning Ray. He did not keep Adam away because neither Sharon nor Ray have seen how hurt and pain she's been. Faith's altered state personality is making them pay. How about that for a theory that it is Faith? I mean, YNR has been using Faith as the red herring for like the Adam shooting, all kinds of stuff. Maybe now they are delivering and saying, no, no, Faith is not the red herring anymore. Faith is the culprit. Well, there is a little bit of news on that front, though, because Sherrod says it seems that YNR must have dropped Moses' return to pair up with Faith. A young actor named Donald Bowen has been booked to play her young admirer. He seems to be an intense performer. Hmm. Okay, well, two points on this. We are not getting Moses? No, there's no way. There's no way they're dropping Moses. I mean, they have been, they, they, but you're probably right. They probably are. They told us we were getting Moses and we haven't gotten Moses yet. And now the connection to faith is not Moses. That makes me think you're right. They're dropping Moses. And as far as this new guy uh, is concerned, I googled that name uh, and I found a website called SoapOperaSpy.com. Ooh, that sounds nice. A soap opera spy. <laughs> 
I need to get an in with this soap opera spy. Please tell me it's somebody peeking around the corners of the actual set. But soapoperaspy.com says the new actor's name is Donald Bowen, although no character name has been announced yet. He has the look to be someone who Faith may believe is a teenage boy, but in reality, he may be an adult man who looks young enough to pass as a teenager. Okay, so he, so we've got a cast for this person who sent in the mystery texts uh, to Faith, or presumably, I still think Daisy's theory would be fun, but presumably uh, someone uh, could be uh, cast to be Faith's secret admirer, and yes, it could be someone of Faith's age, but it also could be someone who looks a little older. Uh, and as Sherrod said, or someone who looks, it could be someone who is older, and combining that with Sherrod's comment that he seems to be an intense performer, uh, it seems like there is a theory out there that maybe it's a predatory thing, that maybe this is a guy who looks younger but isn't, and is potentially grooming Faith. Um, I hate that. I'm just going to go on record as saying I hate that. Um, I, I feel like we've been through so much with Faith with the online bullying thing. Um, I, I would, I, I, I'm not in the mood to torture Faith. Are you guys? Do you th what do you think about that? What if if what Faith is going through is bad and sketchy and predatory from an older person? Do you, would you like to see that kind of story? Um, I mean, ugh, it's hard to say yes to that, isn't it? I I just I don't know. I don't know. Faith has always seemed so mature, and I could see how YNR might want to tell a tale of oh, even the people who are the most mature and secure could be come a victim of um, a predator, an online predator. Um, but I, I gotta tell you, that sounds no fun. That just sounds no fun, and I like to have fun. And as mad as I am at Devon, <laughs> Devon and Elena and Amanda, that whole story is fun right now, I gotta admit. But Tina Cole says, I'm so disappointed in Devon, and I'm loving Amanda. Please, oh please, Amanda, don't take Devon back. Devon wasn't going to tell Amanda that he slept with Elena twice. That is not closure to see what you don't want. I understand Devon and Elena needing one conversation to understand what led to Elena sleeping with Nate, but sleeping together means they are not ready to move on with other people. Elena and Devon keep feeling the need to have conversations, saying they need to move on from each other, but then the next thing you know, they're back seeing each other. I don't want to see Devon fight for Amanda. She will just get hurt again, and he's not over Elena. T. Nicole, you could, you said it. You said it all. Because the other thing, too, is you're right that Devon was not going to tell her. That's the thing. He tried to tap dance his way out of it, and he was not going to tell her the truth. It wasn't until she confronted him directly, saying, I want the fact that he finally fessed up. But he was planning on just sleeping with Elena twice and then moving on with Amanda. Maybe. Maybe. We don't even know. <laughs> you are so right. And what you're also right about is that if he's still sleeping with Elena yesterday, he is not ready to move on with Amanda or anyone else. But it's just such a disappointment to me because I really wanted them to be together. <sighs> The first sleeping with, okay, I guess I could have forgiven it. But the second sleeping with, no. And the fact that he was absolutely willing to lie about it to Amanda was absolutely not planning to tell her is a triple no. It's a triple no, no, no. I know now how I need to vote. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 a thumbs down for Devon, but it's a big thumbs up for Amanda. Victoria says, Michelle Morgan has done it for me. I now see her as Amanda. Her scene with Devon was powerful and touching. She went from casual conversation to awakening and then hurt and anger. And all of these feelings were justified. Devon needs to bear whatever reaction she has. And I hope the viewers get a view of Devon coming to grips with his betrayal of Amanda, Nate, and Elena. His earlier actions were vindictive and rash. Oh, you guys are good today. It's First of all, I have to say, I had the same moment 
this week as you, Victoria, where I realized that Hillary's gone from my mind. And that is no small feat because Hillary was a big presence in my mind. Michelle Morgan has now morphed that role into fully and completely Amanda. She is Amanda. She is her own person. And you are right that all of the feelings were there. All of the waves of feelings were there because when she was first with Devon, you could tell she didn't want to believe it. She wanted to give the benefit of the doubt. She even left without pursuing it further. But then she came back. She got the confrontation. She got all of the anger and everything that came with it. But then we saw her follow up with Phyllis at the hotel where she broke down and she admitted that she just feels like her, she's a failure at relationships. She was taking it personally. We could just, we could see the phases and the pieces of Amanda and that, and it was more than just the lines that were coming out of her mouth. Uh, Michelle Morgan played it. She made me understand it. She made me feel it right along with her. And I think you're right that it would be to totally a mistake for her to move, agree to move forward with Devon and to forgive Devon. She deserves, needs and deserves something new. I mean, Amanda is great. I mean, what was it, a year ago when she was first com coming on? She was with Billy. We were all having a hard time believing that it was actually Amanda. Everybody thought it was going to turn out to be Hillary. She had the weird hair. <laughs> But just somehow over time, it has really evolved into this all new character. I mean, she, again, she's the innocent one in all of this. We would never be saying that about Hillary. Hillary Curtis would have been the one who was enacting all of the, the little bits of trickery around town. Uh, but no, this Amanda is different. She's soulful. And I want more, more, more of her. Well, Gary says... <laughs> Just what I'm sure Jack Abbott needs. Another blue Oxford shirt to put in his closet. It's perfectly fine, but it also looks like it may have just as well come from Sears as from anywhere else. <laughs> I think that's really funny. That made me laugh because Sally brought uh, Jack the, the blue shirt as if it were something special. It was something hip. It was a brand new something for his war wardrobe. And all I could think was, it's a blue shirt. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing special about this shirt. And you're right. It very well could have been on the rack at Sears. Which, my Sears has shut down. I don't know, our Sears is still around? I, I, we lost Sears last year, which was a shame. I really liked Sears. I really liked Sears. They had good deals on clothes. <laughs> but, admittedly, part of the reason why I liked Sears was because it was always so empty in there. I, had, it, I just felt like I had the pick of everything. Every time I was in there, it was empty, nobody there, the lighting, half the light bulbs were out at the end. <laughs> It was warm. They were no longer like air conditioning and, and heating the place. And I was like, this is great. <laughs> Just my kind of shopping condition. Alone, uh, but uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, but alone. <laughs> oh. Hey, here's a good prediction from Sherrod. Sherrod sees this as Summer te will tell Phyllis what's really going on with Kyle and Tara and the kid and then Phyllis is gonna turn around and reveal that to Jack then Jack not believing her tells Sally everything and this will unleash the Loch Ness monster on the Abbots. Ooh, Sherrod, I think you got it. I think you got it. Summer confides in Phyllis about Harrison and Kyle. Phyllis, and the fact that Sally knows, Phyllis thinks this is the thing, just the thing to get Sally out of the way. So she tells Jack and then uh, Jack, not be leaving what Phyllis said, confronts Sally about it. And then Sally just sees that as, oh, well, they uh, unleash all this on me they decided to do their bomb well then I'm gonna do my bomb too Sally goes to Tara or uh, and or Ashland tells him everything and that's how it all explodes that's how the new war uh, comes about I like that theory I think that is a really strong possibility Oh, here's what Diana likes. Uh, Diana, I love that you noticed this. Thank goodness. It's always good. You're always good at seeing this. Uh, Diana says, I like the new coat room. 
area at society. We saw Kyle and Summer hanging up their coats when they first arrived at the restaurant, and then again when they were leaving. Uh, as small as it is, it's always a treat when we get a new set on the show. We have also been seeing the door open to Sharon's kitchen lately, which is also so nice to see. Oh, Diana, you're like my set buddy, because you know I saw that coat closet. Yes, it has been nice to see Sharon's adorable little yellow kitchen, but I was like, ooh, a coat closet. That's how easy I am to impress. Ooh, a coat closet. Anybody got any furs in there? Can you even believe that we are about one year beyond COVID first coming out? That is crazy to me. So just about one year ago, we were all biting our fingernails, wondering what YNR was going to do. Oh my goodness, it's just so hard to believe. Oh, I hope that all of you are faring well and feeling better uh, and more positive than you were a year ago at this time. I am. I, I definitely feel um, feel more positive uh, about, you know, the state of the world. Things seem to be getting better, right? We got our episodes of YNR back, and I was not complaining about the classics. I loved all the classics, too, but I tell you, I think the show's in a really good place right now. I was feeling pretty complainy about it a month ago, but... This new writer must be working some magic. Susan Banks, I think her name was. Because I, I just am really all in. I think everything was uh, and surrounding Amanda is fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm really so looking forward to seeing Chelsea get caught by Adam and how she's going to wriggle her way out of this. I can absolutely feel things about the powder keg, like getting ready to explode around Kyle and his secret son with Tara. So, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on right now and sweeps usually isn't what's it's in may is that right i think sweeps is in may so we're not even in sweeps right now and the show is really good and I'm, I'm pulling myself back because I'm not going to be too angry about the no episode on Monday. I'm giving basketball a free year of me not complaining about it because um, there's going to be no episode on Monday. I'm happy for them. I'm a little sad for me, but I'm willing to make the sacrifice <laughs> for the greater good of the community. I'm willing to make the sacrifice of our Monday show because I know that Tuesday through Friday is going to be action packed. <laughs> I'm counting on it, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to your comments for the week. How's about you go on over to yrchat.com, leave me your comments, vote in the poll, let me know what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and come back. We're going to have a break on Monday, but you know what? We're going to be right back again next Sunday, and there's going to be a ton of talk to talk about. I can, I have a feeling. I can feel it. <laughs> Next week's going to be good. Short, but good. Okay, everybody. I love you, and I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time.